Hey there, I am back with another Free the Pit Friday where we look at some of the rarest decks around and give you guys a chance to see what they're all about. And this week, we're gonna be looking at one of the most sought after pair of decks in the entire King's Wild Project catalog. This is the Black Reserve Note Green Gilded and Black Gilded decks. Before I get started, I wanna give a big shout out to Jay, otherwise known as Card Collector 100 on Instagram. Go check him out if you haven't already. He's a phenomenal collector, has a great set of decks to his name. Uh, but he loaned me these out of his own collection so that I could take a look at them and share them with you guys. So really excited to do that. Really wanna thank him for loaning me these super rare decks out of his collection. Uh, these decks were actually produced in 2019 and sold right around Black Friday. Uh, they're a remake of some of the original decks from King's Wild Project going all the way back to 2013. Uh, King's Wild Project and designer Jackson Robinson got their start with a lot of currency inspired decks early on. It was an art style that really fascinated Jackson Robinson and so he built a lot of decks off of that. The original uh, the original reserve note decks were back in 2013, but in 2019, he wanted to do a remake and really bring new life to the series. So he produced these ultra rare versions of the deck, the green gilded and black gilded versions. The green gilded, there were 250 of these produced, but actually less than that, they were actually released because the, uh, the there was an issue with the gilding. So some of them came back defective and so there's actually less than 250 of these out in the wild. Don't know exactly how many of them, but we do know how many of the black gilded are out there. There are only 50 of this deck that are out there. So they're individually numbered. One of the lowest print runs that he's done. So that's the story behind the two decks. Currency inspired, of course, but let's take a look at them. We're gonna start out with the green gilded version of the deck. Uh, the tuck case has a lot of the same style details from the original reserve note, if you've seen that, but it's done in this really dark and mysterious pattern. It's on a black matte finish cardstock, and then the details in the back are kind of this embossed black on black look to them. Really beautiful and highly detailed embossing, but it almost disappears as you turn it in certain lights. By tilting the light here though, you can see that beautiful currency inspired detail. Maybe you can make out the eagle spreading its wings above the American flag, kind of, uh, kind of in a seal style. You have the beautiful filigree all the way around. This is beautiful embellishments. You have the eye of providence there in a circle at the top, but really beautiful detailing and that embossing just uh, very dark, like I said, almost disappears in certain lights. The one hit of color you get in the center is that foiled version of the, the green foiled eye of providence. It's that eye in the middle of a pyramid that appears on a lot of US currency. I will say the foiling on this, not the cleanest. There's a little bit of bleed to the foil, uh, but still a really striking design element in the center there. As you turn to the side, more black embellishments with the, uh, with the embossing and then reserve note written in green foil. Same thing on the other side. Nothing at all printed on the bottom of the tuck case. Some extra black uh, embossed detailing there on the top and an embossed version of the back design of the cards here on the back of the tuck case. We'll look more at the details of that in a second, but I'll give you a little look at some of that beautiful embossing. So really rich feel to the tuck case overall, but kind of a plain dark looking tuck case overall. As you open up the inner flap, there's more embossed details including the Eye of Providence here on the smaller inner flaps, but you are immediately hit with bright green as you open this up. There's inner foiling on this, and let me see if I can get the cards out. It's definitely a tight fit with the cards, so have to give it a little bit of a shake. Uh, so if you have this, it's a bit tough to get the cards out. But once you do, you can get a look at that beautiful green foiled interior. It's almost entirely green foil, just solid color. The detailing you see here isn't an interior design so much as it's just the, uh, the reverse of the embossing that was done on the tuck case. The one detail you do get here is kind of done in the negative space. So this is just the black of the tuck case showing through and it says, live free or die. This is the motto of New Hampshire, and it comes from uh, some writings of one of their most famous soldiers, General John Stark. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, he wrote this, uh, and the saying became famous as New Hampshire's uh, motto and kind of a statement of their defiance against tyranny. 
So really cool. I love how bright that green foil looks on the inside. But that's the tech case. Let's take a look at the cards and we'll start with the back design. And here it is. Definitely in keeping with that dark theme. It's the black card with the dark, dark gray detailing on it. Almost hard to see some of those details. Uh, for me, I would have liked a little bit better contrast because the details are really impressive on this and they're hard to make out with that gray on black. You can definitely see that beautiful currency inspired detail on the two way back. Lots of scroll work, filigree all the way around, just like you'd find on currency. Again, you get that eagle, big, proud, bold at the top with the uh, eye of providence over the top. The banners in the middle that read Vexum Novus, which means uh, it's Latin for a new standard. And then the one little hit of color, which even though it's kind of a darker green, looks super bright given that it's the only pop of color on this. And you have that emblem with the eye of providence once again in the middle. So really interesting look to the cards on the back design. I wish it had been a little bit brighter. I think it comes across it a little bit as just a black monotone look. You lose a lot of those details, but interesting look. Of course, it's the black reserve note. So going with that darker look really on theme. All right, that's the back design of the cards. Let's take a look at the cards themselves. And we'll start with the Diptych Joker. Now Jackson does a lot of Diptych Jokers with his decks. And this one features one of the most enduring scenes from not just currency, but from any American president. This is George Washington and the image of Washington crossing the Delaware. It appears on some US currency. I believe this one's pulled from the series 1875 $50 note, uh, but one of the most famous images of George Washington that you'll find anywhere from his days as a general during the Revolutionary War. So that's him standing proud in the front of the boat with the American flag being held around him, his soldiers rowing their way across the Delaware. A uh, really beautiful looking image. Lots of those intaglio style details that Jackson likes to play around with so much on these currency decks. And then the beautiful kind of partial framing there with that filigree in the corner. You have the US and then a couple of little banners that say number 13, common theme in any King's Wild deck and then King's Wild project. So there's your Diptych Jokers. Love a good diptych, always a sucker for those. You also get a couple of other art cards. The first one is a depiction of the Declaration of Independence, the document that's credited with sort of kicking off the great American experiment as they declared uh, independence from Britain. So there's the Declaration of Independence. And the other one, this, uh, I couldn't find much detail on the original artwork. The only references I could find were some vintage reproductions. They just called it an image of the Minutemen, uh, a drummer and a flute player. Uh, so a couple of them leading the Minutemen into war. Uh, I'm sure this comes from original piece of artwork, but the only thing that I could find was a bunch of sellers of a vintage poster, a uh, vintage reproduction poster with this image. But pretty cool image on there. Love that uh, kind of smirk on the drummer's face. All right, so there's your extra cards, two art cards and the Diptych Jokers. Really beautiful as always, but let's get into the aces and start with the ace of spades, the power ace of the deck. Beautiful, absolute explosion of detail on this one. Such an ornate ace of spades. You get that spade pip in the center with the swirls of scroll work there. The banner with the United States playing card company. Of course, they printed the deck and then tons of detailing, pulling all sorts of elements from currency, whether it's these sort of leaf work or scroll work that you see here, the eagle spreading its wings, the eye of providence, all details you'd find on little bits of currency everywhere. You get the King's Wild logos on the left and right in green, and then the four corner pip and index. Little tiny spade pip, and then a slightly larger but still very thin font on the index but really beautiful detailing. The other three aces are impressive in their own right, certainly a little bit less ornate than that ace of spades, but you'll see these beautifully drawn uh, pips in the center, each done in that sort of currency style once again, red for the red cards, black for the black cards, and then really beautiful borders around them. Now, interestingly, the borders on each one of the suits is a little bit different. So you'll see some slight variations as you go from one border to the next. 
again, kind of looking at maybe different parts of currency that they draw inspiration from. I love the sort of variation in this one because it's almost kind of a smorgasbord of different bits of currency art. And I love how this deck's a celebration of that. Uh, now, interestingly, you'll see in kind of keeping with that currency theme, he has these little emblems here with what kind of resemble a serial number. So you have the SER and then the 110112. Uh, you'll see different serial numbers on each one of the aces. I believe these are a reference to uh, initials and then significant dates in Jackson Robinson's life. Not sure what the specific references are, but I think that's where these come from. And true, I think that's kind of a cool personal touch to add to the cards. All right, there's your aces. The number cards in this deck are relative to everything else that we've seen relatively standard and plain just features a simple watermark with the king's wild logo or emblem there in the back pretty standard custom but nothing too out of the ordinary pips and then you get the four corner pip and index nice if you want to use this for gameplay or something like that but it does have a really tiny pip there in the corner uh, but as you go through pretty standard layout to the pips nothing too special on these like i said relative to the rest of the deck these are fairly ordinary you get classic black cards the red cards now go with kind of a more crimson red color with a light red watermark in the background and then as you get back into the black cards you now have the standard black with a gray watermark so slight customizations to the pips they're nice but nothing too out of the ordinary compared to the rest of the deck and there's your hearts all right, and then we get into the court cards. And with all of the currency decks from Jackson Robinson, these are really some of the highlights. He features phenomenal artwork with characters that are pulled directly from famous currency. Of course, it gives them borders that evoke that feeling of the beautiful artwork that's put onto dollars in the United States. Uh, it's just a really great look to them overall. We'll talk some about some of the characters just so you guys know who's uh, inspiring some of the bills on this one. But here's the Jack of Spades in that two-way court. And the Jack of Spades, this is William P. Fet uh, Fessenden. Fessenden. Uh, he was actually a Maine politician and eventually served as the Secretary of Treasury under Abraham Lincoln. And this one's pulled from an 1882 $10 note. Beautiful artwork. Love that intaglio engraving style. Again, Jackson plays with that so much in his artwork and it's really inspired by currency again. As you go to the next deck, we'll talk about the Jacks first. So this is the Jack of Diamonds. So most currency really kind of draws on famous politicians, but you'll see some that goes through other inspirations. This one is actually Samuel Morse. Uh, he was an inventor who's most famous for inventing Morse code or co-inventing Morse code. Uh, but he's featured here and also makes an appearance on a $2 note from 1896. So that's where this image was pulled from. So there's the Jack of Diamonds. And then you go to the Jack of Clubs. This one is uh, James Madison. So this one goes back to the politicians, President James Madison. Uh, this one comes from a 1934 $5,000 note. I did not know prior to this, by the way, that there even was a $5,000 note ever. But there's James Madison. And then finally, the Jack of Hearts. By the way, as I go to this, you'll see the differences in the border. It kind of switches up from card to card, just like we saw with the Aces. Uh, but here you go, the last of the Jacks. This is the Jack of Hearts, and it features William Seward. Uh, William Seward was the Secretary of State under Abraham Lincoln, and he got his own appearance on a bill. This one's from the 1891 $50 note. All right, now we go to the queens. Now, females on currency are kind of interesting. There aren't too many of them. Some of the ones that you see on currency are actually just fictional characters. So you don't see females represented too often. So Jackson had to dig a little bit deeper for the females on this one. And he went with all cards that were inspired by military payment certificates. These were bills that were used to pay soldiers when they were serving overseas specifically. So they were used up until sometime right around or right after World War II, and then date all the way back as far back as the 1800s. And so that was the inspiration on the female court cards here. And we'll start out with the Queen of Spades. This is Lady Liberty as she appears on a $10, um, a $10 military payment certificate note. A really beautiful, serene image. Lady Liberty is kind of a unofficial mascot of the United States. So she appears on a lot of coins and currency, but this one is right off of military payment certificate. 
Uh, the Queen of Diamonds. This one is just a famous portrait. I'm not sure this depicts a particular person, but interestingly, this one kind of is colloquially known as the Marilyn Monroe note because it features this image of somebody that a lot of people say kind of looks like Marilyn Monroe. Uh, but a, definitely a much more modern look to this overall. Although this particular image uh, on the Queen of Diamonds comes from a Series 611 $10 uh, military payment certificate note. So really beautiful, interesting look to it and kind of a unique look for currency. All right, now on to the Queen of Clubs. And this is from an image called Flowers of the South that appeared on a $5 military payment certificate, Series 521. Really a uh, nice look to this one overall. Interesting, another unnamed character. A lot of the ones from the military payment certificates aren't necessarily named characters, like I said, but they still feature really beautiful artwork right off of the currency. And last but not least on the Queen of Hearts, this one is Hyp uh, um, Hypatia. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, she was actually an Alexandrian uh, mathematician uh, so it goes back to antiquity even before the days of the U.S. Uh, but really beautiful looks. You get, you've got her carrying the book there. And I love that uh, sort of cloth that she has draped over her. It's a really interesting look to this one overall. Uh, but Hypatia appeared on a Series 661 50 cent military, uh, military payment certificate. So very cool look on that one. All right, and then we get into the Kings. And King of Spades, perhaps the most famous character from all of U.S. currency. This is Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he's most known, of course, for his appearances on the $100 bills, but this particular one uh, is Benjamin Franklin from a $50 note back in 1880. So there's Ben. All right, King of Diamonds. Got a few more to go here. King of Diamonds, this is Alexander Hamilton as he appeared on a series 1880 $20 note. Kind of a thinner look because you have him in full profile there. All right, next, the King of Clubs. This is my favorite card, honestly, in the whole deck. Uh, this is a Native American. They appear on some currency, not much, but this one comes from a silver certificate. Uh, this is Running Antelope as he appears on the 1899 $5 silver certificate. So a famous Indian chief. Uh, love the beautiful headdress and just how unique this card is. It's, this one stands out in the entire collection for me. All right, and last but not least, we have the King of Hearts. This one is none other than Andrew Jackson. Uh, he comes from a series 1907 $5 note. Love it, you have the uh, classic Suicide King style. He's got the sword lifted up to his head there. Uh, so it kind of, again, goes reminiscent of classic uh, playing card poses there. And that's your last court card. So beautiful court cards all the way through. Uh, I can talk a little bit about handling. I will say these are printed by USBCC and actually fan reasonably well, handle reasonably well. Don't think people are gonna do too much handling of a deck this rare, but impressed that gilding doesn't really get in the way of the handling. But that's the green gilded version of the deck. Let's take a quick look at the black gilded version. Now, same basic design and a lot of the similarities in the cards themselves. You'll of course see that the uh, the Eye of Providence there in the center now instead of green is done in black. So giving this all an even darker look than that green tuck case. That green foil now on the side is also done in black. So you get just all black everywhere. You do get the addition of a silver sticker here on the top with the numbering. So this is deck number 50 of 50, the last one printed. And then as you open it up, that shine on the inside instead of that bright green is now done in black. So much more mysterious look to this one overall. Uh, you can barely make out that live free or die there in the middle. Uh, but then we get into the cards. Now the design of these cards, same as we looked at before. The faces, no real differences. The only differences you're gonna see are twofold, or, or one really, and that's gonna be that color of the gilding. And there's that beautiful black gilding. I have personally never seen a black gilded deck, so this was a lot of fun for me to see. I love that look. It's just such a dark, piercing look to it overall. Back design is the same, but that black gilding just goes great with the black card backs. Otherwise though, the rest of the cards are the same. So you're gonna get the same artwork on the court cards, same on the number cards, no differences on those. Same extra cards that you got on the, uh, on the other deck as well. So same deck, different gilding, and I think it's just phenomenal. And again, handling just as good on these. 
So that is the look at the green and the black gilded versions of the reserve note from Kingswall Project. Huge fan of these decks. They're beautiful. They're white whales for a lot of people. Hard decks to get a hold of. But if you're lucky enough to have one of these, congratulations. And hey, I want to give another thank you to Jay, Card Collector 100 on Instagram. Thank you for loaning me these. It was an absolute pleasure to get to dive into these decks. But that's it for now. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reason unboxings and of course, more Free the Pit Fridays. Let me know what else you want to see and I'll see you for the next one.